learning from mistakes especially before the exam during the exam most of the candidates though they know the subject they fail in answering the question why because the candidate might have many reasons exam phobia yeah other burdens the fear in the examination hall not just exam phobia the environment so to come out of this what we should know is uh, well in advance you should know that what kind of mistakes mostly happen before and during the exam as we all know that uh, the cma examination is uh, a combination of both multiple choice questions and uh, essay type questions which are also known as comprehensive questions so when we classify this uh, total exam into four hours exam into three hours and one hour like that is fourth hour so let us break this four hours duration into first three hours and the next one hour is fourth hour you don't have any you know um, uh, break here you can just move on here but the moment this uh, three hours are completed automatically will the system will take you to the fourth hour you cannot say that i borrow time from fourth hour to complete my multiple choice questions from four hours the three hours is to be used for answering 100 multiple choice questions you answer do not answer the moment three hours are completed system will take you to fourth hour in which you need to complete two essay questions comprehensive questions so what mistakes that take place while answering this multiple choice questions and essay questions what mistakes most of the past candidates you know committed as you know that uh, the scale is 500 and the passing score is 72 percent score you should get is 360 marks in essence yeah so when you say that uh, 360 is your target you must have always in your mind that i am going to get minimum 400 and you know 40 so around 80 60 70 should be there in your buffer don't target for uh, just 360 440 450 should be there in your mind now the question is how many marks i can score from this multiple choice questions and how many marks i get from essay questions see out of 500 you can say that around 375 marks you will get from multiple choice questions and the remaining 125 marks from two essays hundred multiple choice questions on an average you can say each multiple choice question will give you 3.75 marks it is not uh, like a equally distributed it depends upon the strength of the question as far as i know if the question is very strong and uh, high weightage obviously the marks will also be higher than this 3.75 so on an average you can say 3.75 marks per each correctly answered question you will get and in essays just let us take uh, you know on average so around 60 and 65 or something like that you can get out of 125 so when you target for 450 
see 375 you should get from multiple choice questions yeah another 75 you should get from essay questions yeah but 375 multiple choice questions in each multiple choice question you will have four answers so it is kind of you win or lose kind of thing so if the answer is correct say for example you clicked a as the answer correct you will get full marks b is the correct answer but you clicked a you lose complete marks for that particular question so there is no question called proportionate or something because it's a multiple choice question do or die so in that case don't take chance losing this 100 multiple choice questions you must always see that i must answer at least 95 multiple choice questions correct at least 95 percent and the remaining say for example even if you do not know the answer you can have an educated guessing based on your practice based on your understanding about the subject because there is no negative mark so my sincere advice to you all is not to leave any multiple choice question unanswered there is no negative mark so pick up all the questions answer all the questions have a strategy we'll discuss what strategy that is to be used have a strategy and follow that answer each and every multiple choice question the multiple choice questions 100 multiple choice questions you may have a combination of numeric and theory questions most of the people uh, candidates think that numerics are very hard and theory because you just you need only need to understand the question and answer the question in my view theory question is also a tough question why because there is english involved there's a twist involved some hidden factors involved there are some distractors so don't think that theory questions are easy because we do not have calculations sometimes we feel that numerics are good because we have some formula we have some target calculation and we get a result the result you find in the answers but theory question yeah point so do not have that kind of concept that uh, theory questions are much easier than numerics now when you say uh, numerics and theory um, it depends upon you know the examination on that day what the proportions you pick the computer will pick up so you may have around 60 numerics and 40 theory questions the other way can be your friend may get 40 numeric calculations and 60 theory so i always suggest that just go with the, a determination that i'll get 50 numeric questions and 50 theory questions better so plus or minus will be there do not worry about it maybe like sometimes you will get 65 theory questions yeah no problem because you have already given 50 50 percentage here so ready to answer 50 numeric 50 theory questions now whether it is a numeric question or theory question you need to practice reading the question first of all how to read the question no it is in english and all no what is included in the question is not may not be important because you may be uh, you know given lots of information but the original uh, you know the point which you want which you need you may just ignore it because of heavy information given in the question so you need to read the question understand the question looking at what you need for that you need to have some kind of subject grip so while reading the question you should always keep in mind these are the important points yeah one 
misreading the requirement. As we all know, each and every time we practice some questions, I tell you to read the stem of the question. So you may have two, three paragraphs. Why do you waste your time reading from the beginning without knowing what the examiner is going to you know, ask? Don't waste your time sincerely reading from the first paragraph. I always suggest better you follow the question, which is the stem of the question, the last line first. Last line first. Follow this. Read the stem of the question so that you know that what the examiner is going to ask. So you will keep in mind, say, say for example, um, in CMA part two, we uh, have a simple question called calculate current ratio. So you may have some, you know, the profit and loss account, the balance sheet or information about uh, the income statement, the information about balance sheet, you read from there. At last, you see that what is the current ratio of this company. So you'll have to look for only just the total of current assets and current liabilities, but you read by that time the net sales, the cost of goods sold, the admin expenses, the tax, the long-term liabilities. Why do you need all this to calculate current ratio? The moment you read the last line first, LLF, you understand, oh, this question is asking what current ratio. I need to have what current assets total, current assets total, current liabilities total. Apply the formula current assets over current liabilities. You save good amount of time. Yeah. And some candidates do not read the question because uh, do not read the question uh, with a, you know, a plain mind. In a sense, this question is going to be definitely hard. Okay. So when you start with that, we do not understand what is required. So always think that I know the answer of this question. Yes. It is not overconfidence, but at the same time, you should not become, you know, the victim of that question. Start reading the question, having a very clarity in your mind that, yes, I know this answer. Then during the practice, during the, you know, uh, training sessions, most of you say or you defense yourself that, ah, oh, just I understood like this. I thought like this. Uh, I did like this or uh, I just uh, applied, you know, the product instead of addition. That makes a big difference. Two times three is not the same as two plus three. It makes a big difference. So math errors are not allowed at all. So you'll have to be very, very dynamic in math. You don't have any you know, uh, very typical calculations like time data, cast data, or you know, something like that. You don't have any logarithms. You don't have any trigonometry. You don't have any differentiation. Simple business mathematics, percentage calculations, divisions, multiplications. Apply correct uh, maths. Like sometimes uh, um, we do not take whether it is 1 million or 100,000. We just ignore one zero. There may be an answer. Divided by 6%. People write 6%, 100,000, say for example, divided by 6%, they write 6.6. .6. It is not 0.6, it is 0 0.06. Okay, so like this, some, you know, uh, math errors. I've seen some seniors who have been working for years, they do commit this kind of mistakes. Please, even if it is small calculation, I suggest you to use calculator. Don't go with the own calculations because sometimes 23 times 5 may give you wrong answer when you calculate on your own. So why don't you use calculator? Calculator is allowed. A business calculator is allowed. Even if you do not carry, the Prometric Center will provide you. And uh, rule application. During the examination, uh, you need to apply sometimes the concepts, what you understand from the trainings and from your studies. Because 
you don't expect any questions what don't expect any questions what we practiced what you practiced the questions are on a conceptual basis thousands of candidates writing the exam worldwide so the questions are prepared based on the concepts so you be strong in uh, the concepts for that reason what you need to refer to is you need to refer to content specification outline that in each section what are the subtopics we have and uh, what do i understand from this subtopic conceptually you should be very very strong apply your justification apply your understanding of the subject okay so do not apply just wrong rule it can be like this no go check apply the correct concept and uh, we have a habit of you know uh, just justifying ourselves that oh this question is too heavy <clears throat> we have a you know strong feeling that if the question is too lengthy obviously it is going to be very tough question in fact no why because a lengthy question will have silly distractors okay we call them as distractors so try to you know find the distractor which is irrelevant at that time oh this information is not at all required now say for example this is a lengthy four paragraph question how do you know that this is a distractor how do you know that this is a distractor unless you know what the question is what the question is that you will come to know only after investing your time reading all these four paragraphs isn't it so what is the technique we are using here yes llf okay last line first stem of the question so when you read this question last line first you understand that what the examiner is looking for then you say that, oh this is a distractor i don't need this this is a distractor i don't need this let me concentrate here that's it so please remember reading the stem of the question will help you to overcome from distractors so that you can concentrate on the information which you need to answer the question okay and uh, you need to be diplomatic while answering the question you know in uh, multiple choice questions the best part is that you have answers the other worst part is that you have answers not the answer isn't it you have answers and mostly these answers look alike so you may feel always in these exams multiple choice exams any exam not just only cma uh, you feel that uh, a can be the answer but i feel that b can also be the answer or sometimes you may get even with a wrong calculation you will have, you will get an answer or wrong assumption you will get an answer which is wrong in fact because they know that if you apply this formula this is going to be the answer so they will put this answer here this will attract you so most of the times especially in the theory questions what you need to understand is let me have a glance on the answers given okay you are not getting any point in you know uh, how to answer this question in that case what could be the wrong answer what could be the wrong answer so in that case try to have some kind of elimination technique oh this is not related to this topic at all so let me eliminate b is not no way it is not related to this subject at all so between a and c so have educated guessing okay read the stem of the question again then come to your conclusion never re leave the question on answer no negative mark repeating again do not leave the question unanswered because there is no negative mark the wrong answer your score is not going to be there that's it but you won't be given any 
negative mark. You are happy. This is a big issue, not having any knowledge of the topic. For this, you need to have a sound knowledge of your content specification outline. CYS, which I shared with you, this is there in your IMA website. So if you are writing CMA part one, just concentrate on part one content specification outline, learn it by heart better so that you know that, oh, this uh, cost accounting, job order costing, this is a form formula process costing, you know, e e equivalent units of production. Part two, this particular question is asking about NPV investment decisions, okay? Break even point, CVP analysis. So you know that, this is from this section of part two of part one like that so you get some kind of confidence and in due course you will get uh, the answer as well when you are strong in content specification outline of cso 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 content specification outline and um, in guessing in guessing so you should have some kind of educated guessing. You have been studying the textbook. You have been practicing the questions. So obviously you need to have some kind of educated guessing. Okay. Now, if you practice the questions, you need to follow these things. One is what is my score I'm getting? Okay. What is my score I'm getting? and which areas I am not getting a good score. Definitely, we all do not like the topic or section where we are not getting the score. This is a, you know, uh, this is common to everyone, me as well. So when I know that I'm not getting a good score from this topic, what is lacking here? You need to spend good amount of time here because this is also part of our curriculum isn't it yeah so what you need to do is you need to verify from your practice that uh, uh, which area is giving you tough time so make out your notes in simpler way and practice again from the same okay and uh, while writing the exam 100 multiple choice questions, do you think that all multiple choice questions should be, you know, very easy? No, in that case, everybody will get the result. Everybody will pass CMA. Everybody will come to an interview. So there will be heavy competition. So there should be some quality, right? So what you should understand is there may be a questions which I even do not get answered in a first attempt in the calculation. So you classify them as tough questions and easy questions. Okay, tough questions and easy questions. So don't expect that all 100 questions are tough. Don't expect that all 100 questions are easy. So try to answer the easy questions, build your confidence. Then how do you I manage these tough questions? So you might say, for example, you might have uh, come across around 10 tough questions which are very hard to understand very lengthy calculations or something like that so there is an option in the exam that you can mark this question while marking also if you can have a guess with your practice with your knowledge and all you can guess that a could be the answer and mark it safe side what happens when you mark it? You answered 90 questions. You even answered these questions, 10 questions also, but mark them safe side. And you still have time in MCQ, that three hours, still you have time. You can go to the marked questions to uh, you know, verify whether your answers are correct or not. Okay, so you see the whole, B is the right answer. Why did I click A? By the time you know the, sometimes you know, simple questions, we don't get the answer. 
but later on oh i know this answer why did i click a right so you can go back only to the marked questions and uh, unmark them you change the answer if you want if you know that answer is b not a you can change the answer you can unmark it what happens if though there's no time at all i mark the questions by answering some educated guessing and uh, i completed 90 questions but what about these 10 questions i mark them no problem no problem if the answer is correct say for example this question answer is a you clicked a and safe side you marked it no problem if answer is a then you'll get marks you no need to unmark it don't worry about that only the facility mark facility is giving you that not to browse all the hundred questions again okay the system will take you to only the marked questions you save good amount of time best technique uh, you know provided there okay so you have to be very wise enough wise enough while answering multiple choice questions because most of the failures happen in the uh, mcqs session and that will have an impact on ss as well okay why because out of 100 multiple choice questions if a candidate does not you know get 50 multiple choice questions correct answers this particular candidate would not be allowed to go to the essay exam so he knows the result on the same day itself out of 100 multiple choice questions if the candidate does you know cannot answer 50 multiple choice questions correctly no essay question is provided system will throw the throw off that sorry uh, did not reach this target so the exam is over so we should not get this kind of you know situation there in the exam now once you complete this three hour exam the next exam is essay and remember please three hours exam the fourth hour exam that is one hour duration take place without any break you can take a break but clock runs you lose the time so any time you save in this three hours mcq session can be given to the essay questions say for example three hours uh, 180 minutes 180 minutes you completed all 100 multiple choice questions in uh, say for example 165 minutes you still have 15 minutes yeah and um, you are very sure that all 100 multiple choice questions are very well answered and you don't want to waste your this time saved 15 minutes so the moment you click next it will ask your final confirmation to go to next and uh, the system will add this 15 minutes to essay question the fourth hour question so you have by default one hour that is 60 minutes plus 15 minutes carried forward from multiple choice so you will have 75 minutes to answer two essay questions yes the time what you saved here can be carried forward to fourth hour exam essay exam just because of that please don't be in hurry hurry in uh, you know answering the questions i want to save around 30 minutes 45 minutes and all you know to give an essay of no use why because remember if you don't answer 50 multiple choice questions correct the candidate will not be given essay choice here so don't be in a hurry don't be in uh, too greedy to save the time here so past the the candidates historical uh, information what we got from the previous candidate was maximum you get around the okay now what i was uh, you know um, about to telling uh, tell you that the 
most of the candidates, the historical information what we found was around 25 minutes they saved max to max 25 minutes. On an average, the candidates who wrote the exam so far from LTM multiple choice questions, okay, around 25 minutes max max time is added to essay. So you you don't say that I will add one hour to my essay because essay I have to write a lot and all. Essay is not to write a lot. Essay is a combination of multiple choice questions again. Essay is not a big task to do something. Only thing is that you need to read and understand the comprehensive uh, the topic which is given in the essay. But questions again, multiple choice questions only. You will not have answers, but uh, it is same like a multiple choice questions. You will not write a big essay. You will answer the questions based on an essay. It is not essay writing, okay? Essay exam, a comprehensive exam. So you just keep in mind that I would I would save I will save around the 15 to 20 minutes time from MCQ session. Don't expect heavy. And it is not good practice also. I suggest don't maintain that kind of attitude that I will save one hour you know time from my uh, multiple choice questions. It's no use also. Why? Because multiple choice questions, you are getting 375 marks that you need to see the allocation as well, right? 375. And uh, how can you expect that you would save one hour to essay question which is going to give you 125 marks? Where is 375? Where is 175? 125. So MCQs, of course, need your time. You can save your time to like 10 to 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, max to max. Even if you don't save also, there is no loss. What I mean to say is that the time saved can be given to essay. Don't just sit in front of screen by not clicking the next button after you complete 100 multiple choice questions. If there is a still uh, time, you're confident that you no need to go for any uh, answered questions to verify your answers are correct or not. Yes, you can click next because this time is going to be added to your essay. But doesn't mean that you have to be greedy in saving the time and adding it to essay. What to what happens if uh, the 50 answer questions are not correct? At least you can go and recheck the marked questions. Okay, so keep in mind that around 15 minutes, 20 minutes is buffer okay. Even if you don't save time in MCQ, you are not losing anything because it is already allocated. You use the allocated time only, okay? Right, then what is an essay? What is an essay question? You have two essay questions in a fourth hour exam. Fourth hour exam. As I so said that uh, it's a four hours duration exam, your energy levels will go down obviously, right? When we have a two hours movie, you have a break in between, we have popcorn, we go out, have tea, coffee, yeah? Got it. Four hours in a strange area. You're sitting in front of a computer. Yeah. Your energy levels will go down. Upon this, most of the candidates, what they do is no rest a day before the exam. This is what most of the people do. You should, you should take a good rest the exam day and before the exam day because this is going to affect this exam. A sleepless night before the exam day. Yeah. So have good food before the exam day. Take rest, full rest. Have some black chocolates on the examination day. Energetic. Okay. Be energetic. Don't take any risk in uh, traveling. You know, take rest and uh, if you are far away from Prometric Center, better stay next to Prometric Center. If it is in a different town or uh, city, if it is in the same city, try to reach the Prometric Center at the earliest possible, like maybe a half an hour, 45 minutes before. And don't be in hurry. Sometimes when you are, you know, reaching Prometric test, a little late, not an issue because 
Optometric center conducts the examination morning to evening. So your test is uh, book date set for example 10 a.m. Better be there by 9.30 or 9 o'clock better. Read the instructions sheet provided by them. There will be some screening etc. You can have good rest there as well. But say for example unavoidable uh, reasons during the traffic or you know, or whatever you are reaching there by 10 15 or 10 20 like that don't be in hurry that my exam is at 10 o'clock i reached here 10 20 don't don't just try to explain them that this is the reason why i'm coming late to call them that this is what happening traffic jam or something else They'll give them the reasons and uh, you can write the examination on that day not an issue yes so don't worry if you reach there for like five ten minutes late it is not the degree exams uh, or pg exams what we experienced that the colleges the testing centers do not allow after 10 minutes or 15 minutes of the cutoff time no just uh, better inform them over phone that uh, i'm in the traffic or i'm on the way it may take five to ten minutes yeah but don't get uh, unless it is unavoidable not in your hand at all uh, try to be there like one hour before at least half an hour before now what i said was like you know the time you saved in this three hours exam you uh, can give it to the fourth hour exam right uh, say for example a candidate was able to write only answer only 90 questions by the time three hours got over because of the poor time management there is a time displayed here on the computer screen but still we don't see uh, the computer screen why i don't know your wrist watches are not allowed your uh, mobile phone is not allowed so always have a practice of looking at the right corner right top corner of your computer screen it will show you the time remaining here after this uh, i will show you how to you know uh, play with the number of questions and time and uh, monitor this time from time to time so you answered say candidate answered 90 questions by the time three hours got over we didn't answer 10 questions unanswered system will automatically take you no need to click next button system will automatically take us to the essay question so what about the 10 questions which are unanswered gone so the system will consider only 90 questions no if i had the time out of at least guessed all these 10 questions out of 10 questions even six question answers guest answers are correct out of got marks yes you are right and what happened here poor time management so always you need to have, have a glance on this top right corner of the computer screen which shows time remaining time remaining this one hour this one hour which is 60 minutes and if it mentioned that 60 minutes remaining means time is over for mcqs so if it says 90 minutes remaining it means that oh 90 minutes remaining 60 minutes for essay 30 minutes for the remaining mcqs i still have time so always have that kind of practice yeah top right corner your eyes should be on top right corner for every okay, 15 20 minutes or how to practice this uh, glancing at the time we'll practice now like how you know use a rear mirror side mirror etc while driving you need to even have a practice of watching this from time to time time remaining okay is there any special practice for essay question i say that there is no special practice for essay questions but if you practice as if you are writing the essay exam that will help you out what is that say for example in uh, cma part one we have uh, a topic called absorption costing so a theory question may come that what do you understand about absorption costing why this company you know adopted absorption costing method 
So you need to write few lines that the absorption costing method means this and this company adopted this absorption costing method because of this. So unless you practice as if you are writing the exam during the practice, you will not be able to present this in the exam fairly. So I suggest you to practice. Practice doesn't mean that how you are practicing multiple choice questions, clicking the answer. You literally type the answer in your computer, right? Oh. Or take a you know, notebook and write the notes as if you are writing the exam. Like CMA part two, there may be a question that uh, what are the three motives of holding cash? What are the three motives of hold, holding cash in working capital management? So I know the answer. It is T, C, S. You know the answer. I know the answer. But how to present this answer is important. That is called practicing the essay questions. Okay. So in a working capital management, we use these three motives. Um, these are the three motives of holding cash. Transaction motive. Okay. Then uh, what is the next one? TCS, TPS, precautionary, TPS, P, 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 precautionary motive, precautionary motive and speculation motive. Give one example each, one or two example each. Because you are practicing at home, you are not paying anything towards exam fee, right? So better you practice at home that if this question is asked, will I be able to write in detail or not? Oh, no, I know the answer. No, you know the answer, but you should know how to present the answer. That is important. So write as if you are writing the exam at home itself, especially theory questions. We all, you know, have a, you know, uh, faith in our, you know, our subject knowledge. But at the same time, we should test ourselves that whether I'm going to get, I'm going to get or not. That is important. The best part of essay is it is not a do or die exam. You will get partial marks even if the question is the answer is wrong say for example there is a multiple choice uh, question with the uh, four answers a is the correct answer but uh, we answered c so nothing is going to be given here right it's a do or die exam but in essay uh, cma part two let's take a simple question that um, is asking about current ratio is asking about net present value of a project okay you calculated cash flows you calculated present value factors okay and uh, you completed present values total then from this you should deduct the initial investment okay initial investment to get what npv you know what happens sometimes during the exam plus becomes minus minus becomes plus yeah, human error, tension, fourth hour, energy levels went down. Yeah, because of many reasons, sometimes it may happen. Perfectly done here. Cash flows are calculated, present value factors, then present values of cash flows. You took the total of this. From this, you should deduct the initial investment. Hmm? But you added by mistake. Okay. So instead of deducting the present values so of the, the, the initial investment from the total of the present values of cash flows, you added it. So your answer will go wrong only this portion. So up to this, it is correct, right? If this, this particular calculation, you know, you are going to get, say, for example, 15 points, you may get around 10 points, 12 points. Only the, the, the last part of this answer presentation is not correct. Okay. So this is an advantage here. This is an advantage. You will get partial score if the answer is wrong. Your calculations valid. Yeah. So start with the, you know, uh, uh, an attitude that yes, I'm going to get good marks from essay. The good confidence. Now here also the same, you know, um, problems you may experience: misreading of the questions, confusing questions, etc. So read the essay carefully. While reading the essay, you need to highlight the points. 
a good technique you can highlight particular things like say for example in npv calculation you need a present value okay the opportunity cost in cma part 2 opportunity cost opportunity cost of the company is say 12 percent just highlight it so you don't need to look for that 12 percent in the entire scenario again and again just highlight it you can strike off if you don't want any information you can strike it off you can highlight it so you can highlight the important information which is required in your repeated calculations why because essay question each and every essay will have around five to six questions so these five to six questions are based on the same scenario so better you invest reading this scenario first when you are reading the scenario sincerely making the notes out of it it is nothing but an investment to answer this five to six questions okay all these five to six questions are purely based on this scenario so having a strong grip and the best reading of this essay will help you to answer these questions say for example the 12 percent return on investment or opportunity cost may be used in the first question may be used in this fifth answering the fifth question also yes sixth question may be what are the disadvantages of NPV theory question yeah third question can be if the NPV of this uh, project is say X amount what should have been the you know initial investment so all uh, the questions are based on the essay itself one particular comprehensive question itself okay so while reading the uh, scenario please don't be in hurry at the same time you should manage the time but don't be in reading uh, reading in hurry uh, you know, missing out important points wherever you feel that yes this is going to be used in your uh, answering some questions you highlight it okay so what you need to apply while answering essay questions is that you need to always remember there will be some partial marks there will be some partial marks so this is going to help passing the exam remember 375 marks from mcqs and 125 from essay so if a candidate gets entire 375 from mcq yes passed but what i said around 90 to 95 questions can be answered but the remaining five questions may be out of your hand so don't take risk the essay exam should support passing the exam so very very important to answer this essay question because it is going to improve your chances of passing if you are good in essay writing you are going to get the exam result that is there in your hand yeah now the steps what you need to succeed use you know in essay questions while answering essay questions include you have just 60 minutes to answer two essays okay now you are allocating that 60 minutes assume that nothing is saved from mcqs 30 minutes for first essay, 30 minutes for second essay. So you may have a question that do I need allocate equally? No, in fact, because even in essay questions also, one essay question may be fully theory questions. You don't need to have any calculations at all. It's a purely theory question. The other essay, we have some numerics. We need to calculate, we need to apply for some formula, etc. So what I suggest you is uh, when you are given an essay question, you just have a glance on this essay. Okay, then the question number one, check what is the question. Click next, click next, click next, click next. Six questions are over, click next. Second essay will be displayed. So you didn't answer this, you just kept on clicking next 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 because you wanted to see what is second essay oh second essay is very very easy 
is just asking NPV is just asking payback period is asking just what are the you know disadvantages of payback period a theory question I should answer this question first yes you answer the second essay questions one two three four five six seven seven questions are there okay there is a save button for each question save it then you should go back to essay one right because you just at a glance you didn't answer them then click previous button previous to reach this essay okay then have a glance again and start answering this question okay so you can skim through the essays before you answer better why because a few candidates mentioned that I kept on answering essay one which uh, needed more time to answer which is a little bit tough i'm not sure that i will get 100 percent uh, marks from essay but you know second essay was quite easy and i want to, to answer all the questions there were seven questions given under second essay but i could answer only three questions because by the time the time got over system disappeared i didn't answer the remaining four questions i i should have left the first question by answering all the questions this is what some candidates say yes you can do that yes you can do that after having a small you know a glance on this first essay without answering you can just click five six times you know uh, to to see the second essay then you feel that second essay is much easier answer all the second questions there it is not a rule that no without answering first essay how could you answer second essay nobody is going to ask you the time saved yes you can go back click previous button and answer all the questions of can I write uh, the way I want it? Yes, of course, but you will get the marks from the evaluator what he wanted to give. <laughs> yes, this is what we say. No, I know the answer. Yes, your answer should reach the expectations of the evaluator. So please always remember. The grammar is important. Your presentation is important. Stay to the point. The answer should be concise. Okay, stay to the point. Don't write volumes wasting your time. The answer should be very, very straight to the point. In CMA part one, what are the objectives of process costing? Okay, what are the benefits of activity based costing? Right here, activity based costing is used in this type of companies to get this benefit. Ta -ta 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 -ta. That's it. Okay, what are the disadvantages of payback period? This company is using payback period, but feel that there are some disadvantages. Can you mention three disadvantages of payback period right there? The disadvantages or limitations of payback period. One, two, three. That's it. Don't write payback period definition, payback period calculation with an example, and write disadvantages or limitations of payback period. He's not asking that. This company is applying payback period for evaluating a project. Okay, but uh, realize that the payback period concept is not much relevant to the project. What are the disadvantages of payback period in evaluation of the projects? Straightly, straightly you mentioned there, these are the, the following of the disadvantages of payback period, blah, blah, blah. That's it. Okay, so write. The answer straight to the point it is an essay question but evaluator is not expecting an essay answer in essay format okay in a sense like we write 20 pages 30 pages in our graduation and post graduation okay so say if if you have say for example six questions for first essay and uh, say eight questions for second essay total 14 okay 14 on an average you men, uh, spend around three minutes on answering each question say for example okay so this much time you need to see that within one hour i read essay i read essay two then on, will be uh, able to answer this 14 questions yeah reading understanding applying then typing typing of your answer so i suggest you to use a notepad in your laptop or desktop 
to type your answers. Start practicing typing your answers, whether it is um, numeric or theory questions. So when you practice at home, it becomes much easier there. Don't expect any spreadsheets for the tabulation, etc. Just it should be a you know running text format. Running text format. Always you should uh, you know um, write in a short and straight to the point. Okay, and don't write volumes wasting your time. So allocate you know 20 25 minutes of time to answer each essay how 20 to 25 say so first essay you read the you know the comprehensive um, the, the volumes given like uh, three four paragraphs then understood then this essay is having say for example six multiple choice questions okay so reading of this comprehensive question, understanding and typing the answer for all these six questions should be completed around 20 to 25 minutes. Yeah. Right. So have this practice before you go to the exam. So graders, the evaluators are just looking at your answers straight to the point but not volumes and even if you know the answer partially mention that but don't leave a question unanswered here as well whatever the presentation what you have given there to what extent it is correct yes of course you will get the marks so don't leave the essay question unanswered okay partially you know the answer yes right to that extent don't leave it yeah and use the technique go with the browsing of two essays before you take a decision to write to begin with which essay it is not that you need to write first essay first essay first and go to the next essay okay so try to practice at home before uh, you go to the real exam they say exam also needs some practice at home again it is not a special exam it is just a combination of multiple choice questions yes we know how to answer the questions but how to manage time that is also important right say now we have four hours total and the prometric will give you the 20 minutes orientation orientation that will tell you that you know um, what is the next screen what is a previous screen which button you should press etc etc so you can just skim through this 20 minutes and offload your tensions and all use this for uh, you know good breathing exercise not loudly <laughs> become normal what i mean to say it is not going to be counted so you have four hours that is 240 minutes plus 20 minutes bonus. The 20 minutes you cannot write exam, but you can just be relaxed there by clicking the next button to see that what is uh, happen, what is happening when you click next button, what uh, what happens when you click previous, but this and all you know already. But just the 20 minutes is a free time. Free time doesn't mean that I will click all the 20 screens, next, next, next in five minutes yes you are losing 15 minutes so this is a free time you can just be there and close your eyes sometimes not for minutes together and just offload your burden uh, become normal and uh, be familiar with the screens then the moment 20th minute gets over your real exam will start or within 10 minutes you click next button next button all the buttons are over then it immediately it will take you to the real exam 40 minutes exam that is four hour exam in four hours i suggest that this um, three hours and one hour exam in three hours you have 180 minutes right think that you have only 150 minutes the 30 minutes should be there always in your hand bonus like that. okay so 180 minutes you are taking 150 minutes for 100 multiple choice questions 
so you should complete in 1.5 minutes that is 90 seconds yeah the remaining 60 minutes anyway it is allocated to essays so have uh, this time in your mind that uh, in 150 minutes i should complete uh, 100 multiple choice questions i am keeping 30 minutes in hand that is a bonus in fact this in hand is for mcqs if you if you have any time this uh, still saved that will be given to essay but you cannot take from essay to mcqs huh? yes so have a target that i can read uh, the multiple choice question understand and answer in 1.5 minutes now when you are giving uh, uh, 150 minutes for multiple choice questions to 100 uh, to answer 100 multiple choice questions it should be like this uh, actually 240 minutes right 240 minutes is the total length of the exam the moment you complete 20 questions please have a glance on the clock on the top right corner of the screen so you still have what 210 minutes left two hours 10 uh, two hours that is uh, three hours three hours 30 minutes left so it will be like this three hours 30 minutes left yeah uh, it, it is mentioning only three hours right so it is uh, mcq so you have 180 minutes the moment you complete uh, 20 questions spending say 30 minutes plus or minus the time remaining should be two hours 30 minutes the moment you complete 40 questions you just have a look at time remaining that it should be two hours the moment you complete 60 questions from 0 to 60 questions 1 to 60 questions time left is 1 hour 30 minutes the moment you completed 80 questions time left is 1 hour the moment you completed 100 questions time left is 30 minutes this is in your hand a bonus even plus or minus yes this 30 minutes is going to manage so have this kind of you know practice in the exam as well just look at the top right corner that i have completed 20 minutes 20 uh, 20 questions okay what is the time remaining okay so this way you can manage the time please use this tactic i'm sure you will manage the time very well in the exam so your multiple size questions question number will be displayed here these are the questions you can scroll up scroll down you can have a basic calculator time value table i don't suggest using this calculator go with your own calculator and uh, time remaining you can see time remaining here okay never click the finish button until you complete all the questions essay one essay two you will have standard 60 minutes if any uh, time is carried forward from the multiple choice questions yes you have you okay so assume that we have 30 30 minutes here so you no need to mention this time remaining and all but you can go to skim through this essay one and this two essay two before you take a decision which essay you should answer first if you feel that essay two is much easier than essay one yes answer essay two and go back okay to essay one essay is nothing but the combination of multiple choice questions as i said this is a scenario when you click this you know button at this you will see a screen here a scenario then you read and understand you can move the screen here at the corner minimize it maximize it okay then what is the question define net present value hey see here you don't need to read the scenario at all net present value define net present value what do you understand about net present value why do you need scenario you know the definition you start typing here got it so sometimes uh, uh, some questions do not need uh, this uh, scenario at all okay so assume that uh, around six questions are asked for each essay so essays are given here here also you will have time remaining yeah so complete this on time if any answer is wrong or uh, to be modified you can do any time here all right and do your best
I wish you all the very, very, very best in your exams. I am sure that you will succeed. God bless you all. So take care.